On Nationwide this evening, we travel to Africa in search of the Irish at work there in many fields. We meet an Irish priest, visit an Ethiopian prison and hear about a life's vocation. And we witness an eye-opening account of a justice system which is miles apart from our own. Irish people seem to have a handy knack of getting into every nook, cranny and corner of the world. And when Father Paddy Morn first came to Ethiopia in the 1990s as a student, it was the start of a life's work in a country which he now calls home. Abraminch is situated 500 kilometers southwest of the capital of Ethiopia, Addis Ababa. We're built beside two lakes, Lake Chamo, Lake Abaya. And in between the lakes, there's actually a mountainous region called Yeegziabir Dildi, which would translate as the Bridge of God. So this is the town of Arbor Minch. The name comes from Arba, which in Amharic means 40, and Minch, which means spring. It's a town of about 100,000 people. We have a very big university population. And it's also a place where we, as the Spirit Missionaries, have established our mission 44 years ago in 1972. I was assigned to Arbor Minch six years ago and then I was the director for all our different development works. So we actually have a, a very extensive water, sanitation and hygiene program. In the last three years, we've managed to get clean, potable water to over 40,000 people. I have the responsibility as well for the parish. And I think that's a really interesting difference between parish life here and at home in Ireland, because our church is filled with young Catholic students. And the parishioners teach me about the gospel by their lives, by their witness, by their hope, also by their fears, by their concerns. And it's really a blessing to be a parish priest here. The Eucharist that I share is a communion with especially the poorest. It's a communion with the sick, the housebound, that's the bread I break here. But the work and the place which Father Paddy claims is closest to his heart is that of Arbor Minch Prison. People are sent to prison as punishment. They are not sent to prison for punishment. The punishment is the loss of liberty. There are rules for visitors in the prison. There are three main rules. The first is that you are never to ask a prisoner's name. The second is that you're never to ask what crime they've committed. And the third, you can never ask how long they will be serving and that's to respect the privacy and the dignity of the prison. So my business is not condemnation. My business is in actual fact Christian compassion to be with them. And to be truthful, there are times when I do wonder, what has a person done? And I know because sometimes they would tell me, and I know a sadness because many are young and many will never, ever leave this place. It was originally established in Arbor Minch to accommodate 1,200 people. Now, as time has gone on, we now have over 2,500 prisoners. So we can see straight away the challenge there in terms of overcrowding. This covers all varieties of crimes, from petty larceny uh, up to murder. We have uh, many people, one third of the male prisoners are here because they have committed a murder. Over two thirds of the women are here for the same crime. So they can expect to serve very long sentences. With so much going on, 
it's easy to forget that this is a prison. It feels like a village, but the walls are always here to remind us. And unfortunately for these children, they're also imprisoned by these walls, and not for any reason of their own doing. So, this is the female section in Arbermange prison. And as we can see around us, there are many children. There's a tradition here whereby all women are entitled to have the fullest of relationships with their children. And that means the kids can stay with them up until the age of 14. So that's why we see about 25 kids with the women here. As we can see, there's a great sense of life. Things are happening, energy, and it's, well, for a prison, it's, uh, it's really amazing in many ways. <laughs> This is one of the eight dorms. Five years ago when we started the work in the prison, every woman was sleeping on the floor. And one of our first projects was actually to get beds built, which we got built in the prison. The other dimension was there was no ventilation. So there was no airflow. And this was another one of our initiatives to actually put in some grates. And it's important because all the women will be here from 6 p.m. until 6 a.m. the following morning. For the last seven years, I have been in prison. I will be here for 10. I miss my family and my children. They are not coming to see me. No one comes to visit from my relatives. So the reason why the women are cooking in their own compound is supplementary food. They already get the food from the government that is provided by the kitchens every day. But it is also a matter of taste, of preference, and it's also a way for them to express, I suppose, who they are. I think often we, from Ireland or from the Western Hemisphere, we think of poverty as not having material goods. But in actual fact, an Ethiopian interpretation of poverty is not having anybody to share your food with. Much of the work that is visible is infrastructural, like this new dining building of which Father Paddy is very proud. This is one of our projects. We have built three dining halls. And the point was that before this, the prisoners were actually eating on their knees, which was both unsanitary and undignified. And so our idea was to create a space where they could eat together, but it's also used in other times where they can rest, relax, and we're really happy. I think it's added a lot to the life of the prison. Small changes which make a big difference have also been undertaken in the men's dorms, as this prisoner of nine years has experienced firsthand. Before Father Paddy came, things was not like this, the ventilation system. They even, we don't have foam, you know, uh, they're sleeping, uh, th this material we don't have before. Then Father Paddy was one of the facilitator to get this uh, material to sleep on. Before that, we sleep on an comfortable material so he can sleep during uh, better better sleep during the night after we get him things facilitated better became better so it it became um, good to, to live now but even with the improvements it's still hard to imagine what life must be like cooped up with 170 other prisoners in the relentless heat for 12 hours every night before i come here I was living in good situation, in better situation. So it was strange for me to sleep in such place. Unbelievable. During the night, this foam will be strict down here. Then, you know, more than 50, 60 prisoners sleep down here. So to work, you have to, to be careful unless you will step someone. 
then there could be conflict, you know, he may uh, insult you or you, you upset him, so something we can follow up. So it will be very tough. I think the difference between this and an Irish prison is that Irish prisons have two major factors to contend with. One is prisoners with addiction challenges and the other is prisoners with mental health issues. Now, as it happens around Arbor and in the prison, we don't have people in those categories. The other dimension I think that really adds life here is that people are allowed to work. So by far, the greatest income generation activity in the prison is in actual fact the weaving. Over a thousand prisoners are working every day. And this allows them to make an income that they can send out to their families. They can support their families. They would make exactly as much here as they would outside. The prisoners work as a cooperative and they share the profits accordingly. I have been here for four years. My sentence is 17 years. I am not happy being a prisoner. I have lost many things. The government provided this chance that the prisoners can make their own income. This is good. People from outside buy from us. They order what they need, not only blankets, but also different items. This gives the prisoners a chance to make money, keep money, send out money, or save it through the local bank which visits the prison three times a week. And this is great because we can see the shops around us. This is how some people make money. And the good thing is it allows them to have a positive economic relationship with their families who they can still support even being within the prison. At this time I pay three home rent for my mom one, for my girlfriend and for my brother. I believe in work. I've been painting pictures here, so I, I, I get money from that. And uh, sometimes I uh, sell scarves, hats. When Father Padu come, there was no work opportunity in the education system as, as much as today. So that the prisoners are idle, they fight, they try to escape, something like that. So I think the education facility, the work opportunity makes the prisoner happy, happier. They are more free. Father Padi was, you know, a spice. He tried something, he made it good. Some people have sacrificed work in order to go to education in the school that's right behind us. They might have missed opportunities earlier in life, but everyone can graduate from here in the equivalent of the Leaving Cert. And that's an extraordinary opportunity for people as well. And we, as the Catholic Church, want to support that sense of education, to support the learning of people, that they leave the prison with skills, with hope, and hopefully for a renewed start. And this works in many, many ways because recidivism is at less than 4%. So we do not have a revolving door policy here. And a very good sign about those who are released is that they keep in contact with Father Paddy, even if it's to try and flog him a painting. One thing that's very noticeable in the prison system here in Ethiopia are the strong interpersonal relationships between prisoners and prison authorities. We see our prisoners and the prison officers dancing together. We see that sense of celebration at national holidays. And it's a wonderful thing because it shows that there is a trust. 
and above all things the great dimension of life in this prison is trust if we walk around we can see sharp like knives hammers chisels all that could be used to kill to maim and to wound and yet the prisoners are trusted with these because they work with them because they do the woodwork and that indicates a level of trust that is inspiring every prisoner who comes in is always told if there is ever a fight never ever use a weapon and in the 53 years of this prison's existence no prisoner has died of an attack here In case this is resembling a normal village a bit too much, we are crudely reminded each day that it is most definitely not. The hustle and the bustle of the day gives way to the quiet of the evening. At six o'clock, every prisoner is in their dormitory and they won't be out until 6 a.m. in the morning. And so all around us now, we see the deserted village. After the break, big changes for Father Paddy as Ethiopian life for him comes to an end for the moment and we catch up with him in his new post in Dublin. After 11 years in Ethiopia, Father Paddy is now working back in Dublin on a three-year assignment with the Spiritan Fathers. Although based in Rathmines, I met him at the church where he helps out in his home parish of Rohini, North County, Dublin. And we gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It must be nice to be back in Rohini, Father Paddy. Oh, it's a, it's a real joy for me. Every time I come back, it's a lovely homecoming for myself. It's where I grew up. It's where I was baptised at my first Holy Communion confirmation. I remember as a 16-year-old boy in there discerning and wondering and thinking about my life. And now every time I came back from Ethiopia, it was really with a sense of praise and thanksgiving to God, really, just to be safe, to be home. And also, I feel I always grow in Rohini. It's a very special atmosphere. And so as we think of all the refugees trying to find safety in Europe, an emptier church than Father Paddy is used to in Ethiopia, yet the locals are thrilled to welcome him home. The congregation is much smaller than what you might be used to in Ethiopia, and how do you square that in your mind? I'm sad in a sense that my generation is not as prolific and as visible in the church, and that is a reality. But yet I think of a lot of these grandparents in here, they're actually doing a huge amount in terms of supporting their grandchildren, bringing them to church, trying to explain faith, what it means, and making it in some way viable for a new generation. So I, I believe we have to be with the people who do come to church. They're the ones that give life to the institution. And they also bring profound wisdom and learning and experience. And it's just a joy for me to be almost growing old with them as well. Do you know what? You're a younger Elizabeth Taylor. That's what it is right now, right now. That's it. That's it. Phil, are you a regular parishioner of Father Paddy and what do you make of his masses? Uh, he's so, he's like an old priest, what I call the old style priest. He's lovely. He tells us about Ethiopia going out and you feel humble because they're so poor out there. Now I shook hands with him there and I can hear yeah, that. I said, it's nice to hear your voice again and it's all good. And you know, he was delighted and it's a, it's his personality. I then travelled with Father Paddy on his well-worn path from the north to the south side of Dublin City. His official job is vocations director, as well as acting chaplain for St Mary's School in Rathmines. First stop was a visit to third class. What is the best country in the world? But is dealing with the contrasts very challenging? 
from life in Ethiopia to life here in Rathmines. I don't operate from a sense of guilt. I operate from a sense that I've been blessed. It's a blessing to go to Ethiopia and it's a blessing to be able to share my life with people. And we want to bring as many people in the world into a place where they enjoy the fruits of life where they enjoy peace, they enjoy security, they enjoy food security. And I think that's much more positive that really we operate from a basis of blessing. Thanks to Father Paddy, Ethiopia is well established in the minds of all the students in this Absolutely, school. Yes. So what we have here is a program the fifth year lads in the technology class are actually helping us to put frames onto the paintings that the prisoners have done in Arbor Minch. Right. And it's a program that we're using recycled election posters Boy. to get some value out of them. So. so as we discussed, we're going to frame today the pictures that Father Paddy has brought back to us. First, we all have to pay attention to Mr. Nesbitt. Stretch the pictures over the cut election posters and seal them up with the masking tape in the first instance. Now, yeah. uh, Mr. Nesbitt, what do you think? I wouldn't cut now like that if I were you. Save your fingers. This really was like being back at school, corrected by the teacher. Yeah, OK. We see the different paintings that the lads are now framing. One thing about it is the way that they paint out they choose scenes that are outside of the prison environment. So there are themes that are coming up. Definitely, nature is a really strong one. It comes up again and again and again, different wildlife. Some of them do fishermen, uh, indicating their own past lives as fishermen. And others then look at, uh, often about travel, movement, and especially about freedom. He must have some sort of meaning of a bicycle on a tightrope. Meaning maybe like life is very, very hard and if you slip off, but plummeting down. When you hear and think of prison, stereotypically it's a very dark, a very mean place, especially in these poorer countries. When I saw these, it was like, they're all really positive, like they all are there who are doing this or to get better. They're not there just because they've been forced to, they've actually chose to do this. <laughs> One last question that I was dying to ask. So, Father Paddy, where is home for you? Is it Ireland or is it Ethiopia? Uh, well, it's, it's Ethiopia and it always will be Ethiopia. But I don't see that as a negative thing. I think there is a wonderful opportunity here to do good work. I believe I can make a contribution, but in my heart of hearts, I'm looking forward to getting back to Ethiopia. Tain ach will lo journey for Lord o Veglick, Shine Mantra Doug, our fair city of Morach, Egahox. But next tonight, the new series of the Gansey continues after the break.